Thanks very much. It's, it's great to be here. I have to say, first of all, I've slightly misinterpreted the brief for tonight. I didn't realise we were supposed to be speaking about Japan, but Japan has had a great influence on me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, an architecture lesson. The, the definition I use of architecture is that architecture is materials arranged according to geometry to accommodate life. And I think that a successful project has an investigation into each of those things. So here we have, you know, the idea, this sort of material narrative of charred timber, um, this arcing geometry and the, the life, the use of it in a gallery context. And within that, a, a more particular uh, interest, the transformation of apparently simple forms in response to a set of ideas or cultural questions. So I like the idea of something that at one level is extremely simple, but that holds a lot. I think life can be very complex, but I, I don't really want life to be complex. And the more simple that it can be, and the less stressful that it can be, I think, I think there's, there is value in that. Anyway, a simple form in Japan. This is one of Brett's shots. Um, the simple shed in Niigata. The sites, there's heavy snow during the winter. So the roof's pitched back, so the snow falls on the road because the council will clear the road, but they won't clear your own driveway. So all the buildings are located right next to the road, falling towards the road. Which is a great practical... And this is our building, which is another simple pitched roof form. I, 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 I actually never, when I saw the set of photographs, first of all, from Brett, I never noticed this photograph, but I think it's probably my favourite now. It's funny how... Anyway, the, the idea of this form, it's a very simple triangular form that reinterprets those shed forms with the directness of its volume, yet it holds these sort of different presences. presences. So here it has this kind of frontal institutional presence, very kind of anchored. But when you move around the building, you get all these different perspectives. So... You know, it's, it's got this 45 degree corner, so it loses it and it becomes about four stories high. Um, you get the frontal thing, you get these other kind of things with this sort of line, or you almost lose the roof, or you get these crazy thing. Various um, geometry, so an apparently simple form, a triangular extruded form. And then in the snow, when, when it becomes a different set of conditions. Um, so this for an Australian architect was quite a fascinating experience to be dealing with a, a context where you get this immense volume of snow, which we don't really have to deal with. They can get 1.5, 2 metres of snow per night. And moving into the building, I guess the material idea here, the kind of darkness of this exterior form, so it's got this very kind of abstract presence of an art object sitting within the landscape. Everything externally is dark timber slide open the door and everything inside is warm, honey-coloured timber. So it's suddenly transformed from the abstract art object to the much more kind of inviting, um, comfortable in interior. This is Gombe-san, who's the, the nearest neighbour. This is another shot of, of Brett's, this thing of capturing life. So this sort of idea of portraiture and the life within buildings, I think, is such a, a valuable thing to document. But Gombe, who lived in a, a beautiful um, Minka house just down the road, and this is Gombe performing at the opening of the, the building. He didn't let on until quite close to the opening that he, he actually, um, he had mentioned that he, he enjoyed karaoke, but we discovered later that he, he, he had been the, the Japanese national karaoke champion. <laughs> and this is a 75 year old man in a tiny village, really as remote as you can get in, in Japan. This leads on to another project. So I guess that, that sort of idea of the simple forms um, is a sort of body of work, and it's not really all I try to do, but it's just been one thing that I've been doing. This is a response to, for an exhibition in response to the, the Francis Bacon show. So Francis Bacon was a, I won't have time to explain this, but Bacon was actually a cabinet maker, and a, he, he made furniture, that was his first kind of craft. So I wanted to make an object that from the outside had that presence of sort of fine furniture, the kind of affectation of book match grain and shadow lines and the whole thing, but then you come inside and those gaps be between let light through to create almost one of Bacon's sort of prisms. But I wanted a different connotation where, where it's a much more hopeful sort of thing because it's about light creating that form. This is another small transformed uh, black form. This was, at, was called Stones of Newington, which was at, with Newington School. And the boys in the school, it was to celebrate their 150 year anniversary. The boys photographed a whole lot of sandstone blocks on the school took that into Photoshop, brightness contrast, and then produced these laser cut panels. Um, and then we installed them on this simple structure and the boys were putting them up. So it was a sort of collaborative participatory art installation. And you get this really beautiful lighting effect. So the, the, I wanted to create this wash of light on the corner, but 
the funny thing was that it, it, it had this, what, what a, a process that began with stone um, actually had the presence of a canopy or a forest, uh, ultimately. And then finally, Crescent House, which you see here, uh, which I thought it would be good to show a few shots during the daytime since we're here at night, but the, the, the aim here is that um, through the device of framing, Framing creates an expectation of vastness or something, um, because when, when, when we look, through, when we frame something, we tend to have a, a kind of expectation of quality. So by using it, the device of framing here, it tries to imbue the finite hedge with a sense of vastness to try to transform an ordinary landscape into something exceptional or to reveal the beauty in something ordinary, which actually relates quite nicely to what Brett was talking about with the, the pond. And you get this, these beautiful effects and the light coming through during the day. If you come at the right time of day, I don't know the gallery's open at that time in the morning, but the light comes through and hits this wall. So that's a photograph right there. And it's actually quite nice to... But the idea that a, a precise object, that one of the things that it might try to hold is a, is a sort of quality of joy. This isn't my project, but uh, it's Toyo Ito Sarko Inji Theatre. And I, and I came across this um, just recently, but to me, it kind of, op seeing a project like that opens a door of a very kind of precise geometry, but also a, a sort of exuberant structure. So to me, simple forms are one thing, but a kind of agenda to create exuberance. To me, that's a, a kind of real justification for creating crazy form. And uh, so for me, this sort of series of simple transformed objects is one body of work within a larger body of work, which has a whole lot of other um, ideas hopefully ready to explore in future. Thank you.